we come to the end of module 6 here we are seeing what is wasp what is sans top 25 and what are the 10 domains of wasp a little bit of what each vulnerability is now these are some very good books if you are interested in web application security the web application hackers handbook is really interesting on the right hand side it is available it is not very expensive you can probably buy it all kinds of attacks and methods are given in that book then there are live cds and dvds available kali which was earlier called backtrack samurai web testing frame, framework wasp live cd is available then raspberry pi the one on the right can be used as a security at dropbox i have installed kali linux in a raspberry pi then some oasp links you can learn about zap z attack proxy then enterprise security api open sam it is similar to your cmm it is not exactly but the framework is similar then other useful links are about top 25 you can get details from that site there is a vulnerable web application also put code.google.com bot git then kali dot kali linux pon pi ju shop so we come to the end of module 6 so we thank you for your attention and what i would like to add here is whenever you are doing a web application testing whether it is live or whether you are using a vm to test your skills or to learn the skills always try to do it in a manual method possible or with minimalistic set of tools some of the good tools that i have used at least from the open source side or free side is some of the mozilla addons like web developer toolbar then you have the tamper data for cookie manipulation you have cookie manager plus the same things are available for chrome also fiddler is a good one for microsoft internet explorer web developer toolbar is available for chrome as well then you can try out with the tools available in oasp itself like your z attack proxy your web scrap is there wpt is there w3af that is web application attack framework the best place to start i think is install kali on a vm and play around with the tools with the vulnerable application downloaded and installed or on the online site you will gain a lot of experience and a lot of insight on how security assessments are done now one of the major things that we see if you use commercial scanners no doubt you will get a good result but there are a lot of things as i have said in the beginning of this module that you have to test it manually for example unsuccessful attempts to log out log in then existence of a captcha a captcha bypass itself has to be tested then you have existence of an audit trail in an application so there are several manual methods or skills that are required to see that the application is secure there may be other areas also but if you take the password itself as an example you can probably list out at least 6 7 points of the my for example password length the password content in the sense alpha numeric special character whether it is validating unsuccessful attempt attempts to logging whether password history is been maintained that is password reuse then whether your password is maintaining or 
if you say that I need a minimum of 8 characters, when I do a change password, does it accept only 5? So these are several things that you will have to work it out and do the assessment. This is only a small area of password that I said. Then the login is very very important in web, applica web applications. If you have a WAF, then review of or frequent analysis of the WAF logs also will give you a lot of information on what exactly is happening in the application server. Then the exploits that are related to your framework, it's a .NET, your Internet Explorer, client-side validations, all these also have to be checked. So it takes time, it takes effort, it takes a lot of practice also. Now different people have different difficulty levels in areas. Personally when I started doing web application audits, I found SQL to be quite difficult. Then once I started working on SQL itself, then it became relatively easy. So if you have a problem in any of the particular area, I suggest that you, if you have a problem with SQL, install SQL on a Linux server and work around, play around with it, see how it behaves. So you will get a basic understanding of how the database works. Similarly for XSS, use the cheat sheet in the beginning so that you get familiarized with what kinds of scripts are being accepted and how the scripts have been formed. So in due course you will start learning to make your own scripts. Same way for your CSRF, then cookie hijacking or cookie manipulation or session hijacking. So you play around with the cookie manager or the bug suit, see how the cookies are behaving, whether you can copy that cookie, make a new cookie on another computer with the same cookie value and see if the page is opening in a logged in state in the other computer. Or try to sniff passwords over the net through Wireshark or again use burp so that you trap the request and see what how the password is exactly traversing in the network before it goes into the SSL. So these are things that you will gain experience over time and since this course is an introductory course and a theoretical course. I myself find it a little uninteresting, but it is a necessary evil that we know the theoretical part of how each of these work or how each of these are exploited so that when you actually perform the practical assessment it becomes easier for you. So conceptually your base will be strong. The foundation will be strong, wherein you can try out even variations of these vulnerabilities or use a combination of vulnerabilities to exploit a particular feature. So you will get better and better with time. With this we end this module 6 and our sincere thanks to all the participants who have registered for this course. And we hope to see you soon in course 2, the contents of which will be announced in due course of time. And we hope you enjoyed the course and we are always there to help and assist in case you have a problem. So please feel free and thank you.